Aloha friends, Brian Gossett with GM Sports Media, and it's another episode of Game Time with the Goss, powered by Grey Wolf Promotions. Hey, with the football and volleyball playoffs coming around, go check them out for some of the best playoff t-shirts, www.graywolfpromotions.com. Uh, my guest today is Holton head football coach Jason Tucker. Uh, he and his Buffaloes coming off an impressive 56-49 win against Arnson and Martin to improve the 3-1 and in District 86A. Uh, Coach Tucker, thanks for joining the show. No, good to be here. Thanks for having us. All right, yeah. Uh, talk about that win against Martin. Uh, you know, you mentioned it's been probably at least 15, 20 years since Halto maybe even beat Martin. Obviously, an offensive shootout. Uh, just talk about coming away with that victory. Well, we were, you know, we're coming into the game. You know, Martin's been a powerhouse in the area for a long time. And, and you know, they played a tough non-district schedule. They were coming in. Um, coming in two and one in district and they had lost a really close game to Bowie that I thought could have gone either way. So, um, you know, we talked to our kids all week about the way our season's progressed and I feel like we've done a good job of getting better every week. We've kind of, um, been taking baby steps from a coaching aspect, but we have still been improving every week. And we, I, you know, I told the kids to say, if we're, you know, Martin's hitting us at the right time, you know, we've been getting better every week. Um, they're a really good team. Um, but you know, we have a chance. Um, we saw some things on film from our own team that we think we can play with a lot of people in the area. And, um, you know, our kids were really excited about the challenge, you know, and our kids, we haven't played at Choctaw over there in a while. And so our current varsity kids haven't played at a big stadium like that. So they were excited about that also. And, um, you know, we got there. Um, I thought the offense came out and played pretty well early. Um, defense was, struggled early. We were on our heels a little bit, but once we got the first turnover, I think that, I think that helped both sides of the ball realize we, you know, we could play with Martin and uh, it ended up being a back and forth game the whole game. And, you know, really proud of our kids. Um, they, uh, they had a couple chances there to maybe take the uh, old emotional standpoint of, Hey, it's Martin. We gave him a good game, but you know, it looks like they're going to win. There was a couple times in the game where that could have happened. And, the, but the kids didn't do that. They kept playing hard. Um, you know, we made a lot of huge plays, any, any close shootout game, there's probably a dozen plays that if they don't go your way, the other team could win. And, uh, and uh, you know we we came up big in a lot of a lot of those situations. Yeah, big night from two of your running backs, Rodrigo uh, Roberson, who had three ninety four on the ground, five touchdowns, and uh, Keenan Jackson with uh, one fifty six and and three touchdowns. So two kids alone combining for five fifty and uh, all eight touchdowns. Just talk about those uh, two running backs of yours. They did a uh, they did a great job. First of all, they they do a great job within our offense of you know, setting the blocks up because we are, we become a pretty run heavy team right now. Um, we have, um, you know, our, our starting quarterback, um, Dominic moved on. He got hurt in the third game of the year. So um, Gage Seeley's done a great job. He's a sophomore. We had to move him up from the JV. So um, we've become even more run oriented um, since that happened. Um, Gage has done a good job with it, but at the same time, we, we, our office coordinator and all of our guys have uh, understood what we're trying to get done. Um, so it's, it's requiring, you know, nine, 10 guys blocking, um, sometimes from uh, for that one guy, we're not spreading it out a whole lot, and um, they've done a good job. Um, I can't say enough about them. The uh, they've taken the team aspect of it and understand what we're trying to get done. And you know, our receivers have done a good job buying in and and blocking. Our tight ends have done a good job and buying in and basically, you know, kind of behaving like old linemen along with our old linemen right now, and and knowing that we're trying to make sure we can create some situations for Rodrigo and Keenan to get the ball. And, and they did a good job with that. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of teams out there that it might be a little hard to take this approach because, um, you know, a lot of people are spreading it around. All the skill kids want to touch the ball. And, and um, we haven't been able to do that the last couple of weeks. We've had been having to be, uh, you know, give to those two running backs and let's see if we can win. And the, the kids have done a great job getting behind that from a team aspect. So it's been fun to see a little bit old school. Uh, kind of piggybacking on it. Can you talk about, your O-line, you know, typically uh, Martin, you know, kind of known for a big physical defense. And uh, with those numbers, it seemed like your line was able to get, uh, for the most part, the, that first push and, and get up to the linebackers in secondary. Yeah, our, our O-line played extremely intelligent. Um, and, you know, we did a good job um, for the most part of working our double teams. And even when we didn't get movement, um, you know, at least kind of get in the way. 
And, you know, we had some times where we got some movement. We also had some times where, you know, our linemen and our tight ends just had to maybe get in the way a little bit and just give Keenan and Vidrico a chance to have something to cut off of. And and they were able to do that for the most part, um, most of the night. And uh, it was really probably our best total game as a as a unit um, from the line and the tight ends together, blocking, working combos, coming off on backers. And then, you know, with the formations we run, we, we force the safeties to get involved in the box also. So there were times where – you know, on paper, if you're in the stands, the safeties make it look like there's four or five linebackers down there. So the, uh, you know, again, the, at times the running backs and the tight ends had to get involved and make sure they're helping with double teams and coming off on those guys also. So it was really, really, really a fun night for those guys. Uh, talking with Halton coach Jason Tucker, uh, you know, the last couple of seasons been uh, just sort of learning curve for you guys, you know, two wins last year, uh, you know, winless in 2022. Uh, just what has this year been like and and coaching these kids as you try to bring back a winning culture to hold them? Well, it's, you know, that's, that's a good question. What we had, we felt like we really had a good culture going here and a winning culture here. And then, you know, after COVID and, and maybe that's not the reason, but around that time we had some things kind of, you know, kind of regress and you don't like that as a head coach. And, and, you know, so we tried to start addressing those two years ago and it was a slow process, a little slower than we wanted. But last year, um, even though we only got two wins, we were in eight of our 10 games. We were very competitive, had a chance to win the game. You know, you kind of felt it coming back as a coach. You know, maybe if you're in the stands seeing the losses, you didn't notice it. But we did as coaches. Our kids um, did a great job last year, I thought, kind of almost reestablishing a little bit of a competitive foundation. Um, late in the season last year, we had a really big, huge comeback win versus Eaton. Um, that was a real springboard for our kids going into offseason. Um, and then this year, um, you know, we had a, a, a huge comeback win versus Boswell. Um, and, that you know, that one right there kind of almost you got to learn how to win again type of deal. So that comeback late in the season last year and then that comeback against Boswell, um, I really think that gave our kids some confidence. Um, it wasn't the old, you know, we're down, we're probably going to lose again attitude. It's like it's it almost became a, hey, we're down, but we're still in the game. And our kids have really done that uh, all year. Um, and then, you know, one thing we talk about the kids um, just being a Haltom is, yeah, we've been down for a couple of years, but um, we've been good in the past. We're going to be good again. And and, you know, this year, you know, it's it's good to see us uh, stacking some wins again on top of all that. So but, you know, it's a good place to work. The kids always work hard. Um, you know, our numbers are back up now. So um, and then, you know, we got a couple of wins going and, you know, things are getting, you know, it's feeling like it did before COVID right now. Uh, we still got some tough games coming up. We've got, you know, nothing clinched playoff wise or anything like that. So we still got to we got to figure, you know, that's our ultimate goal is to get back in the playoffs. And we, you know, we haven't done that yet. So um, the kids know that. So as as fun as that victory was Friday, you know, from a coaching standpoint, we want to as soon as we got to school Monday, we want to put that to bed and start worrying about Bowie. But um, but it was a good win for us. Yeah, going uh segue into that, I'll get you out on this. But yeah, another big game with Bowie, uh four and in district. You got you guys are three and one, uh seven PM Friday over there at, at uh, Birdville Fine Arch Complex. Uh, you know, you guys Bowie had beaten Martin the week before. You're coming off that Martin win. Uh, just your initial thoughts about that game with Bowie. Well, first of all, uh, Coach Sam does a great job over there and um they've really got those guys rolling right now. Their season is a little bit like ours. They uh they uh, they struggled a little bit in non district, and then you can see things starting to gel. And then they got that big win versus Martin. Uh, they looked really good last week on film. Um, they got a lot of good athletes over there. They and their coaches do a great job putting them in a in, in good position. And you can tell those guys are really well coached. They take good coaching. So um, you know, and Bowie, a lot of people had them pick. You know, second in the district this year behind Martin. Well, they beat Martin. So you know, everyone right now, Bowie's Bowie's kind of the top dog right now. So we know we got a big challenge coming up. And um, you know, you know. You know they uh you know, hopefully we can uh we can keep them keep things rolling right now but again it's going to be a big challenge for us um we, we're glad we got them at home um but the kids are excited about it so and it, it's it's fun to have an exciting game like this uh in the late in the season all right awesome i'll uh, i'll be out there covering for gm sports media so excited for for a great matchup uh but otherwise uh good luck there friday and the rest of the season coach tucker i appreciate it thank you so much all right, Halton head football coach Jason Tucker. And uh, that's another episode of Game Time with the Goss, powered by Grey Wolf Promotions. Uh, check them out. Check us out too, gmsportsmedia.com, and we'll see you next time.